if, it, if this bait is a suspender or a barely floats and you upsize the size of the hooks, it becomes a brick. Mm -hmm. Bullshit got the best swim bait. That's proof. <laughs> you want that uh, chick hominy? You want it on uh, this bait right here? Okay. That's what's up. You get yourself some of these. Now, if, if it sinks too fast, if you put a drill right here in that hole, that will hit the internal ballast. Drill it out, put it together, sink it. Put the hooks on it, of course. Okay. When other guys on the market, they're stuck. Mm -hmm. There's no way to alternate it, there's no way to tune it. You're stuck on the actual bait that you get. Now, a lot of people say, well, I could just change hook size. Yes, you can. But when this bait is a, if, it, if this bait is a suspender or a barely floats and you upsize the size of the hooks, it becomes a brick. Mm -hmm. So that little bitty significant weight is required to sink these things. They're very fickle. So half a split shot, tiny split shot, more like buck shot, okay. which is what I use. Okay. Uh, so sometimes the weight of a hook is too much. Right. Most times it is. Yeah. So I give you that opportunity to do that. Nice. Another reason why I keep the pin out is if you get a bait and you want it custom painted. Okay. If you if you epoxy this thing down, yeah. you ain't gonna get the pin out. Get it out at all. You know, right. If it changes the weight of the bait or whatever. Right. Also, if you want to get a different action, you can mess with these screws. They, they don't make that. Oh, they don't? They don't make so that. So what's the length of those screws that are in there? How far can I unscrew those out? Well, usually the more, the, the further the screws are in, the tighter the, the wider. Oh, the wider? The wider, because it becomes, you don't even do that. It becomes one piece. Gotcha. Okay. It okay. wants to go. Right. Now, if it's a bigger gap, say like this, if you saw this bed in the tank, yeah. and it's got a softer tail, so it can cut corners by. This has a much firmer tail. So it, 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 it's a rudder on a boat. Gotcha. So it's a, a lot of physics in this bed. That is why. We have to pin out. You can clip it down when you're when you're happy with the bait. It's absolutely. How long you been doing this, Mike? Ten. How long you been making this bait? Fifteen years. Fifteen. How you get into it? Huh? How did you get into it? I was a uh, I was a guide. Okay. Uh, I was a guide in Atlanta on one of the most busiest four engineer lakes in the United States because of the lake proximity to Atlanta. They were body fishing. Uh, well, very very heavy pressure lake. Okay. Um, and I said, you know, what, what do I got to do to catch these bigger fish? And I just started eliminating the process of, well, if I go smaller, I know my fish ain't going to get any bigger. Right. So what happens if I go up? And that is what got the wheels turning. Not only I was catching bigger fish, I wasn't catching them all the time, but I was more consistent. I was able to figure it out and build on that. Right. And back then, 15 years ago, they didn't have swim baits out here. Right. It was all California. It was all trout baits. Yeah. We didn't have any gizzard shad swim baits. That's right. The thread fish swim baits. So that's where I started. And I was all nice that niche early on and, and we with it. So they didn't have YouTube pages to show you how to make pays. That's a tight end. Yeah. Then when you kill it, does it do that? Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Okay. They got a softer tail for sharper turns. Oh, well. Uh, see how long